Welcome to another lovely episode of Life in Australia. So today, me and my crew are visiting the Queen Victoria Market in Melbourne. It's one of the most iconic spots in the city. You can actually come straight to the heart of the city and go to the cheapest place to shop. You get literally everything, and I mean literally everything. I was just going through the whole history board here. There are amazing stories to share, so let's go check it out. As we said, Queen Victoria Market, we are right, walking right across the two main sheds of Queen Victoria Market, Shed A and Shed B. The construction started all the way from 1877 and it was finished over 1906. So it took nearly 30 years for both these sheds to be completely built and extended all the way up to Peel Street, which is the end of this, this corner, this stretch that we are walking. So we've got so when I started the history, 1877, Queen Victoria Market essentially basically had a lot of wholesaling activities, but they were not sure about what to do with so many small retailers that was popping up across Melbourne. So they sought the help of the Melbourne Housewives Association and they brought in women to start shopping and eventually it was the idea of the superintendent back at that time mr min so then they brought women in to conduct shopping experiences but women were hesitant to come to queen victoria market to do basic shopping because they were having a hard time to transport whatever they shopped because it was wholesaling activities so there used to be there are stories of small boys building small wooden carts and stamping up the old registration plates because People did not afford cars, not many people could afford cars back then. So small shopping carts developed by small boys, they would be offered at the gate of Queen Victoria Market to the housewives who come in to shop. And then they could just roll it out to their customers' homes for a few pence. So there is great history here. We're just at the end of the street, this shed A and B, and we'll get to see other historic artifacts here, and we'll get to see how it works inside. So let's go. So, at the time of the European settlement in Australia, this area that we are standing right here, right in front of the Queen Victoria Market, used to be owned by the Aboriginal people. It was part of the uh, Warung language speaking tribe and it used to be part of the Kulin nation. So, this entire fabric of market system was supposed to be established in Melbourne and the Melbourne Council, the people who settled in Melbourne for the first time, identified the reason for it and they established a council management system in 1842 and decided that we'll have a central market in Melbourne and further expand out to the other outskirts of Melbourne. So as you can see, the Melbourne Queen Victoria Market, if you come out to the front and see the big building there this used to be a meat market first so melbourne city council was established in 1842 to manage the many markets in melbourne but this queen victoria market started out as a meat market in 1869 nearly nine years before the market was officially opened to the public as a common place to wholesale and retail products so the meat market became overcrowded over that nine years and then they decided that they need to retail out. So they sent out people from the main marketplace and they opened retail shops outside of the Victoria market. So it was opened in 20th of March, 1878 at 4.30 a.m. by three people. The councillor, who used to be the mayor, the clerk of the mayor, and the warden of the market and since then queen victoria market has been a very iconic spot and a very favorite tourist location and it's been embodied into the melbourne's cultural fabric there's so much more to see let's go explore inside the melbourne queen victoria market 
there are different sections. So there are two sections, one with the main building and there are two different other blocks. The second block is where they have different sheds, as I spoke to you earlier about, shed A, shed B, and there are nearly six to seven sheds right now. So in the first building, which we are going to go in now, is where you can find all the amazing varieties of seafood and meat. Tons of butcher shops, tons of seafood stores. You can, got, you can literally get anything you see, including different varieties of crab, lobsters, oysters, you name it. The seafood and the food varieties in there is amazing. So let's go see. was area one this is area two there's no area 51 but in area two where you can find all the delicatessen items so deli items you name it cake fish oh, sorry not fish my bad I just walked out of the butcher shop sorry but you can find different kinds of deli items including dairy products tons of game meat there's a lot of uh, food varieties you can get food confectionery nuts anything deli you think Queen Victoria Market has got it the best quality and probably the most cheapest you can find in Melbourne. And you can see it's a regular Sunday, but it's crowded with people. So you should definitely see this place. famous for something else. it's called Borek I've never tried it before so I'm staying in queue to at the Borek shop and I want to try three different types of Borek so it's not just for me don't worry I'm already fat but I've got a crew as well so let's go try it Borek's people it is so hot so there's cheese and spinach and two spicy lambs they're just four dollars each but I see everybody snacking on this so I have to grab one of these so hot can't wait to try it I'll let you know once I try it we are right in front of Queen Victoria Delhi and I have my friend here who is trying you know giving people to try out different types of cheeses and I think I will go and try some cheese and crackers and see how cool it is
our beautiful people. We've just covered a single little corner of Queen Victoria Market. This is nothing. The place is massive. You've got live music down there. We've got so many other stuff. We've got fresh food, vegetables right here. There's art shows, there's photographs. You can actually get your face painted and portraits drawn for you. There's so many items that you can actually shop. This is no single day is enough to cover the entire Victoria Market. So we'll probably come here another week just to show you the other side of Victoria Market, but don't wait for it. Always come over and watch. Until then, I'm wrapping up this episode of Life in Australia. I will see you another week with another story. Bye.